Hello friends, this video on waves part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 15 before going ahead with part 16. Now let us talk about a very important principle that is called as the principle of superposition of waves. So what does this principle talks about? Whenever I ask you, have you noticed that whenever we start any new topic, I often ask you, so what, what do you think listening to this name? That's because always pay a lot of attention to the name given to a particular object. Because when the naming is done, it is done after thinking about it. So the name itself tells you quite a few things about that subject. So when I say, for example, when I say wave number, Wave number means number of waves, something related to that. So number of wavelengths per unit distance, right? Similarly, when I say wavelength, that means the length of a wave. How long is a wave? So wavelength basically tells you that, right? It is the length of a single wave, a single cycle of wave. So the name tells you a lot of things. Similarly, here we have superposition of waves. That means it, it must be talking about uh, some scenarios where two or more waves, where multiple waves will superpose on each other, where waves will combine. It will talk about something related to combination of waves, right? So let us have a look. It talks about individual waveforms can be algebraically added to determine the net waveform. That means if you have some set of waveforms. Now before I go further, let me just ask you. Are you aware what is a waveform? Well, I will not go into very detail of it, but since we are using this term waveform, I would just like to tell you, waveform is nothing but, it basically defines the outline of a wave. I mean, if you look at the wave, the up and down of the wave, when I talk about the waveform, it just tells about the overall motion of the wave. It just talks about the overall wave. It doesn't talk about individual particles or individual crests and troughs of the wave. So it says that if you have multiple waves, they can be algebraically added to give, give a net waveform. So how does that happen? Let us suppose we have two waves. Let us suppose I have two waves. The displacement of them are represented like this. Let us suppose the displacement of the first wave is represented by y1 which is equal to a sine k1x minus omega1 t plus phi. Let us call the second wave as y2 which is again a function of x and t which can again be represented as a function of kx minus omega t. This is a function of kx minus omega t, right? Similarly, you can write it as a sine k2x minus omega 2t plus phi. So we can say that what is the net waveform if these two waves combine? So if these two waves combine, we can say that it is y1 plus y2. Or similarly, if you have multiple waves like this y1, y2, y3, y4 and so on till yi, you can say in general that summation of these functions for i from 1 to any number n. So this will represent the net waveform formed by the superposition of the individual waveforms. Right? So some of the, one of the best example or an interesting phenomenon which is a very good example of superposition of waves is the reflection of waves. It is a very good example of superposition of waves. We will discuss about reflection of waves after a few slides. Let us talk about superposition of waves in a bit more detail. Let us consider the superposition of two waves which are in phase. I talked about in phase, out of phase when I was discussing phase of a wave, right? So now we will consider two waves which are in phase with each other. That means all the points in the two waves are in phase with all the points on the other wave, with the respective points rather. Okay, so we will consider two waves in phase. 
these are the two waves in phase this is wave 1 this is wave 2 so if you see the behavior of e the two both the waves are exactly similar to each other therefore each point on this wave will behave exactly similar on, with the respective point on the other wave right so these two waves are in phase what happens when these two waves superimpose when they superimpose you get a wave which is in phase with these two waves but with a greater amplitude since these two waves are in phase that means they have the same phase let us suppose if this wave is represented by a sin kx minus omega t and if this wave is also represented as a sin kx minus omega t then this wave will be represented by 2a sin kx minus omega t that means even this wave is in phase with these waves but the amplitude of this wave is just double the amplitudes of each of them that means both the waves got added up their amplitudes got added up to give you a bigger wave so this is how two waves in phase superpose with each other now in this case both the waves are traveling in the same direction what will happen if these two waves are in phase but they are traveling opposite to each other in that case also they will superimpose that would be somewhat like this this is one wave this is another wave coming nearer to each other they come and they combine to form a higher wave with double the amplitude of these waves not exactly double some of the amplitudes of these two waves and then they combine this wave and then again they move forward I mean waves is not something which will just come and combine and then stop right wave will keep moving so the two waves came from two directions they combined to form a bigger wave and then they again they went back on their own ways right this wave coming from this direction combined here and moved on forward similarly this wave came from this direction superposed here and then moved on right this is how the superposition takes place now let us consider the scenario when two waves are completely out of phase you remember what is completely out of phase completely out of phase means the phase difference is pi the phase difference which is generally denoted by phi that is nothing but pi so then we call that the two waves are completely out of phase so this is how it will look like if one wave is up the other one is down because it is out of phase by pi right and by this time you know how do we know that these two waves are out of phase by pi you remember i took different points and told you these two points are out of phase by pi these two points are out of phase by pi by 2 in the same way we can say that why this and this are out of phase by pi right so now in this case if we denote this if we denote the displacement of this equation as a sin kx minus omega t then the equation for this equation will be a sin kx minus omega t plus pi so this can be written as a sin pi minus minus kx plus omega t so what is sin pi minus theta sin pi minus theta would be nothing but sin theta so this can be written as sin kx minus omega t minus right because this minus sign i'll convert i'll take this out and i'll make it as kx minus omega t so here y will become this this is not y this is y2 so this is my y2 that is the displacement for this so what will be the resultant the resultant is y which is equal to y1 plus y2 now if you see y1 and y2 are exactly same with opposite sign so this comes when you add both of them you get zero therefore the displacement of the resultant wave is zero right so this is this is the example this diagram shows that both the waves are traveling in the same direction similarly if they are coming from opposite direction let us suppose this is the wave coming from this direction the other one from opposite direction they come nearer they overlap 
and then it becomes zero and then again they move forward. So they are just two different representations of the same thing. I, I just showed you both the representations so that you don't get confused if you come across the other representation. Now let us look at the superposition of waves if we consider two waves partially out of phase. What is partially out of phase? As in phase means phi is equal to zero. Completely out of phase means phi is equal to pi. Partially out of phase means phi is greater than zero. However, phi is less than pi. So it can be something between zero and pi. Right? So it is some, some quantity which is non-zero. So you can take it as this example. Let us suppose this is one wave, this is another wave which is again out of phase but they are not completely out of phase. They are out of phase by some angle pi, by some angle phi. So let us suppose the first wave y1 is represented as a sine kx minus omega t and let us suppose that the second wave that is y2, this is y1 this is y2 and the second wave y2 is represented as a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. Right? So what would be the resultant wave formed by the superposition of these two waves? That will be nothing but y1 plus y2. So this will be equal to a sine kx minus omega t. If I take a common, so this will be sine kx minus omega t plus sine kx minus omega t plus phi. Now from your trigonometry classes, you would know that sine a plus sine b is equal to 2 sine a plus b by 2 cos a minus b by 2, right? So the above expression is also in this form sine a plus sine b. So let us write it in this form. So this becomes a. So this becomes 2a cos phi by 2 sine kx minus omega t plus phi by 2. So this becomes the expression. So here if you see y is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus phi. So here your amplitude is represented by this term. This term basically represents the amplitude of the resultant wave. Because earlier you saw that the amplitude in when the two waves were in phase, the amplitude of the two waves just added up to form the amplitude of the resultant wave. In the second case when they were completely out of phase, the amplitude was zero. So in this case, the amplitude of the resultant wave is given by 2a cos phi by 2. That means this amplitude will be given by this expression. Right? And the phase of this wave will be determined by this initial phase phi by 2. So depending upon what is ex what exactly is the phase difference between these two waves, we will get the resultant wave. So I hope now it is clear how do we uh, superpose waves and how do different kinds of waves superpose and form a resultant wave. Now as I told you reflection of waves is an excellent example of superposition. So let us talk about reflection of waves. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.